Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today I am in a Volvo from 2011 and we're going to be answering the question, should you buy one of these? Is this a good car to buy in 2021? There are various reasons you may be considering a V70. The size, for maybe a family, maybe you have dogs, the practicality, the famous reliability and safety of a Volvo, or maybe you've just found a good deal. I, I had a look on Auto Trader this morning and you can currently pick up one of these with varying mileage from around around £3,000 to £6,000 in that kind of range. So that is kind of a lot of car for the money. So we're gonna go for a little drive and talk more about this 2011 Volvo V70. So there's probably only a few reasons that you would be considering an estate car. That might be that you have a family, you wanna carry around a lot of luggage, or you have dogs. This V70 may be a good option because with the seats down you get uh, rather generous and impressive 1600 litres of luggage space. I've recently been renovating my property and this car has been so useful for tip runs, disposing of old kitchens and doors. I fit four whole old doors in the back of this car. The model I'm in right now is the D5, which is a 2.4 litre twin turbo diesel, which gives 205 brake horsepower and 420 newton metres of torque. And I have to say it is a strong engine. This is a big, heavy car and this engine is very capable. You're gonna get from naught to 60 in about eight seconds. So the interior of this car, important to talk about because that is where you're gonna be spending all of your time. And let's firstly discuss these seats. Volvo are known for very comfortable seats indeed. We've got leather seats in this particular car, soft leather, soft to the touch. I wouldn't go as far as spongy, but they are almost like you're sitting in an armchair. There's a place for your left arm in this rather large central armrest and a place for your right arm as well. You feel like you have a lot of space in this car and the passenger to the left of you feels quite far away to be honest. The interior itself is smart. I think it's dated fairly well. Everything is laid out in a very sensible fashion and order. The sound system is very good. No complaints there at all. The cruise control buttons on the steering wheel are intuitive. And my experience with Volvos is that everything is in a place where you would expect it to be. You're not looking around for small buttons. Everything is very sensible. The buttons are large, easy to understand. And Volvo kind of go with a does what it says on the tin approach when it comes to their controls. That actually feeds through to the newer models as well. The only thing letting this interior down in 2021 is the ancient looking satellite navigation system, which I have not used. I've not tried it out. I'm sure it still works, um, but it's got this awkward pop-up screen, which doesn't face the driver and it kind of points down at a strange angle. The screen quality itself is pretty poor compared to today's standards. The screen looks a little pixelated. And one of the most annoying things you can do in this car is the controls for the satellite navigation are just there, can you see that? That is the control. So I'm often like turning the steering wheel, I'll hit the button and the satellite navigation screen will pop up. But now we've come to a stop. I can talk a little bit more about the interior before talking about the driving of this car. We have the half digital, half analog display, which I'm not a huge fan of. This was obviously at a time where digital displays were starting to come in and they've gone for this half and half approach. I would probably rather one or the other, to be honest. This car has quite a good spec. We've got heated seats, air conditioning, of course, parking sensors that come on automatically as you approach an object when you're parking. I quite like that. You just leave that on and forget about it. It's got an electric handbrake, AM, FM radio, a CD player, no Bluetooth connectivity yet in this car for music. Um, you can connect your phone and take phone calls with Bluetooth, but, but no Bluetooth connection for music. Although in the center console, we do have a auxiliary cable so you can still plug your phone in if your phone still has a headphone jack. Now we're going to talk about the drive of this car. First thing I will mention, the very poor turning circle and it is, which makes it a little bit difficult to park this car, especially in multi-story car parks and, and to maneuver around anywhere tight and narrow. It also makes three-point turns a little bit difficult. But if you're doing motorway miles, then it is a very comfortable car, very capable overtaking. It's comfortable and smooth, but around town, it's a little bit like driving a boat. It feels big. The steering wheel itself is very large. And on smaller roads, you do tend to feel the bumps. We're running on 18 inch alloy wheels. This problem goes away once you hit the motorway and this is a very nice cruiser. So how is this car to drive? Well, I mentioned that this engine is pretty fast and pretty powerful and it is you get a little bit of turbo lag, but once that twin turbo engine kicks in, this D5 model actually pushes you back in your seat a little bit. It was quite surprising the first time I drove it. I didn't expect quite the power it has. On the other hand, it is quite loud and 
very thirsty indeed on the fuel if you're doing small journeys. This does improve once you do some longer journeys. I recently drove from the south of England all the way up to Manchester and we achieved a much better MPG, but around town this thing seems to drink the fuel. Maybe the better engine would be the two litre diesel, a little bit less power output, but I would imagine still very, very capable. So if you're looking for a used, spacious vehicle with a ton of practicality, we've got two cup holders down here for your front passengers, a rear armrest with cup holders for your back passengers, rear seats that fold completely flat, cruise control, a kind of satellite navigation system that we won't really mention, roof rails if you want to, roof rails if you want to use a roof rack or roof box. One thing to note, forget the compartments in the front doors because they are useless. I can fit my wallet and phone in there and that is it. You would not even fit a small bottle of water in there, which is surprising for a car of this size, known for its practicality. I also think this car has aged fairly well. It still looks fairly good on the road, especially with these 18 inch alloy wheels, rear spoiler. This is not the R design, but they did make a sportier version of this car if looks are important to you. And with the V70 and Volvos in general, the styling really doesn't change much at all. I'll put some old models on the screen now of the Volvo estate and it really, really has not changed going back many, many years. This car definitely feels big with the bad turning circle. It's nearly five meters long. If you're looking for something similar in terms of the Volvo quality, all the materials are very nice in here, then maybe something like the V50 would be better suited for you because parking this thing and getting around car parks and small roads is sometimes a bit of a challenge. But on the whole, for the price, you're getting a lot of car for the money. I hope you've enjoyed this review. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.